Dudes, what's up? By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you step by step how to get pouches with a pickup upgrade, the healing ability, and a vault vial before your very first vault. This is Dusty Dude, and if that sounds good to you, make sure you stick around for this video. Now, I wanna start this video with a banger, so I'm gonna show you a little trick right here with the vault suites. These vault suites right here are a very common drop in the vault. So what you're gonna wanna do is put them in a crafting interface Turn them into these sweet blocks, put them down, and then eat them. These sweet blocks are the best food in the game because the saturation is 100% maxed. See, if you eat these vault sweets, it'll heal a little bit of your health, but then there's the yellow highlighting around the pork chops at the bottom. It only does one and a half saturation. Now, if I eat the sweet block, it's going to heal some health, but the saturation is going to be maxed. And the best part is that the vault sweets are so common in the vault that even if you turn them all into these sweet blocks, and just place them down every single time you need food or you need to refill your hunger you will never run out of these sweet blocks i don't think this is intended so definitely use this now before they patch it or change it if you didn't already know this vault hunters has a quest system that is actually a built-in walkthrough or tutorial of a lot of the different parts that make up vault hunters because there's a lot to go over in this game and i'm not going to be able to cover every single thing but if you do want more tips and tricks from me, definitely check out my Vault Hunters Let's Play series. The first thing that this even says is that there's five different difficulties for the vaults. So if you are a beginner and you want to turn down your difficulty, you definitely can. And they make it super simple for you to change. It's in the pause menu. Once you pause, you go into options and then you can change the vault difficulty to whatever you want. And then you can also change the normal Minecraft difficulty, which I always have it on hard as hard actually has some benefits that I don't want to get into. And I'm getting it more into this book a little bit later. This is the Vault Hunter book that it gives you when you first spawn into a Vault Hunter's world. But it explains what the scaling is, the mob scaling for the different difficulties are. So here this is so that you can see. So Fragged is actually 6x mob scaling from normal. I think that's the right math, which is actually pretty crazy. The quest book also explains that there is different vault modes. There's a normal, which is the one that I normally play on, where you can get a spirit and then you just have to give it some gold so that you can get your stuff back if you do end up dying in the vault. Now, if you don't know what that means and you're lower than level 20, you don't have to worry about this at all until you're level 20. So don't go researching this too much if you don't even know what any of this means. But then there's also casual mode, which you can put in a command to turn the vault mode into casual mode, which means no matter what level you are, whether you're level 20, level 10, level 50, level 100, it doesn't matter. No matter if you die in the vault, you will always get your items back. Anything that was in your inventory, you will get all of that back and you won't have to pay for it and you won't lose it. Now with hardcore, which is how the game was originally designed, if you die in the vault, you will lose all of your stuff. Now, I'm not sure if there is a beginner's grace with hardcore or not, which beginner's grace is up to level 20. These are some other useful commands if you're uh, playing on a server with other people. But for now, we're just going to select that. We're going to click complete and then we're going to get our vault stake here. The next thing we're going to want to do here is look for chromatic iron and vault stone so that we can make a vault rocks, the vault altar and vault crystals. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go down to Y minus 30 and below to look for these things. I'm going to go over the most efficient way to find these things the way that I personally like and other things that you should be looking for down here to ensure that we're able to get everything that we're going to need right off the bat. So what you're going to want to do in true Giga Chat fashion is dig down in a straight line. What I recommend doing is digging down until you're at Y minus 50 and then digging off to the side a little bit. Now you want to look at the mini map and look for caves that are around this area. I'm going to go into spectator to make this process a little bit easier. But what you're going to want to do is just look for open caves that are at Y minus around Y minus 50. Anywhere below uh, Y minus 30 is good, but, but the lower you get, the better. Now, as you can see here, we already found some vault stone. So you're going to make sure you collect up as much of this as you can. I would say a full stack is probably good and you won't get a chipped vault rock. One of these guys right here, every single time you break one of these, but you're gonna get one for maybe every one out of 10 or something like that. And I would say you probably want maybe 16 chipped vault rock to start, and then maybe save this location with a waypoint so that you can come back here and get more later on. Now, other things that you should keep in mind is you're gonna need diamonds. You're gonna need diamonds so that we can get some obsidian down here, which also means that you're gonna need some iron 
so that you can make a bucket so that you can put water in the bucket put the bucket of water over lava and get some obsidian now you're gonna want at least six pieces of obsidian and i'll explain why in a little bit here's the iron you're gonna want to collect up and when you're looking for chromatic iron you're gonna want to look out for this stuff right here that's actually not chromatic iron uh, but it looks just like it now exploring around y negative 50 until you find a large cave like this is ideal and that's because you're gonna find chromatic iron everywhere here's chromatic iron here's some chromatic iron and there's also some chromatic iron over here so i made it a lot easier to find this stuff as long as you're digging and looking at caves low down in the world now if you want a safer way to find this stuff what i would do i would do some strip mining in a straight line while you're at y negative 50. it's gonna be safer it's gonna be a lot slower but I do it mindlessly by holding shift and then just uh, holding down the click while I go through this stuff. Now that we've found some diamonds and we can make a diamond pickaxe and we found enough iron to make a water bucket and we found some water, we can turn some of the lava down here into obsidian and then we can mine up that obsidian. We can get at least six pieces of obsidian and a few extra diamonds so that we can progress on our quests. Okay, so I just got done collecting up enough raw chromatic iron to complete this part of the quest we gotta go back and mine 16 of that vault stone now now you'll see here as i clear out the vault stone i'm occasionally gonna get those chipped vault rocks that you see down in my inventory yeah like there we just got one i would say you want at least 16 to start but whatever this is good for the purposes of this guide so let's go ahead and complete this and it's actually gonna give us eight more which is great now we have to craft a vault rock which this is the recipe for a vault rock we can slap down our crafting table, put our chromatic iron ingots in the middle, put some chipped vault rocks around it, and now we have three vault rocks. We can go ahead and complete this. Now the next step for us is to make a vault altar, and this is what we needed the diamonds and the obsidian for. We can also turn some of our stone into stone bricks so that we can make one of these. There's also this cool feature where if you hold down control when you're hovering over an item that is talked about in the Vault Hunters book, it will pull up information about that item. Now, besides going through the quest and learning about everything that way, I do recommend you peruse through the Vault Hunters book, especially this getting started. There's a lot of useful tips and tricks in there uh, that I won't include in this video. But once we get our Vault Altar, we can slap that down, open up our quest book, click confirm. It is then going to give us a button, which we're gonna have to power this once we feed it everything at once. We just slap the button on there. Now it wants us to make a vault crystal, which then we're going to have a shulker box. It's another thing you get to take into your first vault with you. So what we need to do here is take one of our vault rocks, put it in the vault altar to see what it wants. It looks like it wants stone, sticks, seeds, and copper. So you may have to go down and get a few pieces of copper for this. Once we have fed it everything at once, we press this little button. We want to do this super cool animation. And then our vault crystal pops out. We complete that quest we can then press complete and now we have our shulker box which it's really cool if you take the shulker box and you right click over stuff in your inventory it will just automatically go into the shulker box so let's continue down through the quest now this one's about skills and talents which just tells you about all the different skills and talents you can take and we're gonna get one skill point and we are gonna take the heal ability with it that's what i recommend you doing especially if you haven't played vol hunters before and that's because your health doesn't generate in the vaults with the heal ability you will be able to heal so let's go ahead and take that we get more vault steak yummy yummy yum we can press h i think that's the default key to get into this interface we can go into the abilities right here here is the one for heal we can then learn that we can also set a keybind as you can see mine is q and to set a keybind we can go into options controls keybinds we can type in heal and then we can click on this and then set it to whatever keybind we want the next quest is to acquire a vault enchanter which is this item right here so this is why we needed more obsidian and more diamonds so that we can make this enchanting table uh, we're also going to need a book so that is going to require you to find some sugar cane and some cows and we're also going to need 18 chromatic iron which we can make these chromatic iron blocks by taking the chromatic iron that we do have and putting them into block form like this and that's how we make our vault enchanter which then we can put that down which is great because if we have gear all we have to do is put our gear into here have some emeralds and then we can get all of these enchantments on our boots which i highly recommend putting 
feather falling on your boots on every single pair of boots that you get because you will be falling and taking a lot of fall damage in the vaults. You also get some emeralds from completing this quest, which is super helpful. And the next quest is vault potions, which just means we need to make a vial, which helps recharge some of our health as well. So there's two different ways we're going to be able to recharge our health in the vaults, and that's going to be with these vials and with the heal ability. So I'm going to show you how heal works. If you use heal, it'll automatically just heal you up instantly a little bit. Uh, there's three different types of vials you can make one slaughter goblin and pacifist this one refills over time this is when you unalive mobs in the vault this is when you loot chests i recommend just going pacifist if this is your first time playing but i i kind of like the the slaughter one and here's the recipe for the pacifist vial so we need to go get some glass uh it's going to take one of our iron ingots or chromatic iron and we need to go find a poppy and once we get our vial then we can complete this one as well which then we get an ender pearl which the ender pearl is actually great because pretty soon we're gonna need to make this shard pout which just takes a little bit of gold a string and some purple wool so the next quest the next quest that we need to do is to enter a vault so in order to do that we need to make a vault portal a vault portal is made just like this with the vault stone that we got out of the caves and then we can put the crystal right there in the vault portal for your first of all i recommend bringing in a pickaxe an axe, a sword, as much armor as you can, a bucket of water, some blocks, your shulker box, your vial, five purple wool, one string, two gold nuggets, and an ender pearl. Now there might be some stuff I'm missing, but if you bring that stuff in, you should be good to go. So now let's go ahead and hop in this guy. The vault is going to load. Now, if you stay in this room and don't cross into that room, the timer won't start. The timer is here. The timer is here at the bottom. As you can see, we have beginner's grace. So if we are killed, we won't lose anything in our inventory. And we have beginner's insurance, which means that none of the chests will be trapped. And you get that one up to level 10, which that is also awesome that they give us at the beginning. Now, since we entered a vault, we're going to get a vault sword and a vault shield, which is great because we can roll these right here in the vault and have a good vault shield and vault sword to start off with. Now, the next quest is for us to make the shard pouch so you can take some of the wood that's in the floor of the vault or you can bring in a crafting table so that you can make this shard pouch now once you make the shard pouch then we're gonna get this pouch with the pickup upgrade if you press h you can put it on your hip and then you can have a hotkey that opens it up like this and what the pouch does with the pickup upgrade it means that anything that we walk over will automatically end up in the pouch so if i throw out my raw chromatic iron and walk over it it's then going to end up in the pouch rather than in my inventory so this is going to help with our inventory management along with our shulker box which we can just click and put stuff in just like that so now you are in your first vault with a pouch that has a pickup upgrade you have the healing ability you have a vault vial for even additional healing in the vault and you have a shulker box now that you're in the vault you just have to complete the objective that is at the top which ours is find the monoliths but be careful in here because it is super easy to get lost so ways that you can remember where you came from and find your way back is i like to put the direction that the vault is facing in the chat just like that i know the vault is facing west i normally like going in a straight line west on the first few vaults you can also put down some blocks like this so that you can come back and see that that is the direction that you came from and later on we can actually unlock a mod Called a vault compass which is going to point towards the direction that we came in so it's always going to point towards that vault portal right there that's a monolith right there you can actually grab those by right clicking them like that a good technique for looting in the vault is to go up and spawn everything in and then reassess and position yourself to be able to take it all out all of these are called points of interest or pois now this room that we came into first was an ore POI room, which means that all the POIs were actually ore POIs. So I'll come into this room here, and this is what a quote unquote normal POI should look like. You can get close to it. There's gonna be a spawner that spawns in some mobs. You can kind of take your time to take them out, and then you can come up to these chests and loot the chest. Now when you come up to the chest, you can sort the chest like that, and then you can shift and then click to pull all of those items into your inventory. Another thing I saw 
is that you can type in vault at the top here and then this is going to be all the vault stuff just highlighted so it's really easy to go into a chest and see what stuff is vault stuff which is really all the stuff you want but they took out most of the garbage so i would just take everything at least right off the bat and something to keep in mind is that you get shulker shells in the vault so if you get two shulker shells what you can do is you can actually take the shulker shells get the logs from inside the vault they're everywhere there's wood everywhere inside the vault take that wood you can make a chest and then actually make additional shulker boxes if your shulker boxes are filling up and you don't have enough room to loot everything now i'm not going to find the third monolith but we are going to exit this vault and the way you do that is going back to the entrance even if i did find the third monolith this is how you would leave a monolith vault so don't get lost make sure you can find your way back now if you did complete it you would get a chest and then to open the chest you would have to shift right click to open up the chest and then you get some goodies in there and if you die in the vault you'll end up just coming back to where you slept last and you will still have all the items that you looted you just won't gain any vault xp one more thing i would like to mention is that your vault gear does not take durability in the overworld so what that means is that i don't have to worry about using the vault gear in the overworld and running down the durability on that gear I think that's important to mention so that so that you know that you can keep using your vault gear in the overworld and not have to worry about ruining the durability on it. It was definitely a beginner's tutorial for Vault Hunters 1.18. I hope you did learn something new. If I forgot anything, definitely let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you guys want more tips and tricks from me, I could not cover everything in this. Definitely go check out my Vault Hunters series on the channel. Please consider subscribing and leaving a like. That would help me out a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.